okay? This whole God is my co-pilot thing, that's nonsense, okay? I don't know how to fly the plane. I don't know where we're going. I don't want him to sit there and watch me while I work the controls. I want him to lock me in the trunk, okay? It's his plane. It's his laws of gravity. It, it, he, 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 he's the one with the plan. I'll sit in the back and serve people milk and cookies, okay? But, but no way do I want to control things. Okay, faith like a child sits in the back of the minivan and goes, "Wee, Dad's driving, and we're stopping at McDonald's, and everything's fine." Okay? Faith like a child. Faith like a child. Don't worry about if there's a side impact airbag and what the price of gasoline was and what the safety rating on the. No, faith like a child just knows Dad is Superman. Okay. Faith like a belligerent teenager tries to get God, get Dad to sit in the passenger seat, plays the music too loud, won't go to McDonald's because they're a big corporate empire killing people. Doesn't really want to go to Grandma's, but she might give him some money, and just tries to ignore Dad the whole time. Okay, so which one are you? You know, faith like a teenager, or faith like a child, because there's challenges and stuff coming up in your life right now, things coming at you. You try to handle them with the yellow stuff, you're just rebuking it in the name of you. Okay, you get the yellow stuff out of the way, and you say, Jesus, what are you going to do about this? How are you going to handle this? Something's whispering to me that I need a drink. Something's whispering to me to punch that guy. That's, I'm dead. It's Christ in me that lives. This is your problem. What are you going to do about this? Okay, we got a website called Fellowship of the Martyrs that the Lord had me start years ago. <clears throat> the word martyr in Greek is martus, and it means witness. And, 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 and in the Great Commission where it says, go and be witnesses unto all the world. That word is martyr, okay? The, the Muslims didn't invent martyrdom. The Christians did. That word martyr never was associated with people dying for their faith until, until the Romans brought the Christians to court and said, deny Christ, and they refused to change their story. They refused to back down from their witness, from their testimony. And they were killed for their faith. Ten million of them fed the lions, okay? would go down the river and get baptized. And as soon as they're coming out of the water, there's a Roman guard right there. Okay, what's your name? Lose your land, lose your citizenship, lose everything. You have no right to court, no right to trial, no right to protection. Any of your neighbors can take all of your stuff, kill you, it's fine. And they were still coming down to the river and still getting baptized. Sometimes right after they get out of the water, taken right to get fed to the lions, and they didn't care. That's dunamis. That's something special. That's not yellow stuff. That's not a, that's not a, accept Jesus into your heart. You know, that's not a mental thing. That's something, that's, that's some blue stuff there. I, that's some Jesus moving on their heart where they know this is real. And I got to have all of it I can possibly get. And when, when, when I get to that point, they know getting me to back down. So, There's some folks here that are real shiny. They got a big, shiny, cleaned out cup of Jesus. There's some folks here got some red stuff in their cup. Might be pride, might be self, might be sin of one sort or another. Might be stuff you need help getting off, like generational curses or some demon you picked up because you played with the Ouija board or whatever. That stuff's all real. Sometimes you need help getting the red stuff out. Sometimes you just got to pray and say you're sorry. The simplicity of the gospel is this. Just say you're sorry, get your cup full, everything will be fine. Because the solution to every problem is get more Jesus. The solution to every temptation is get more Jesus. The thing is, people don't know how to do that. We're not necessarily teaching them how to do that. And the reality is, that woman with the blood problem in Mark chapter 5, she knew if I could touch Jesus, I'll be okay. Now I learned, the Lord would have me pray for folks, and I'd hold their hand. And their cup would get full. And I just pray, Lord, whatever I got, give it to them. Whatever good thing is in me that they need, give it to them. Sometimes you just hug grandma and you've had a hard day and everything's better. Because she's praying, oh, honey, Lord, give her whatever I got, and whatever. You know? Sometimes kids in the hospital and grandma comes and prays. You know, Lord, take me. I've had a long life, but heal my granddaughter. Yeah. And the Lord goes, You know what? That's so Jesus-y. I'm not going to kill you, and I am going to heal it. Because you're laying it down, you're sacrificing. The more like Jesus you are, the more it's going to please God. And the more he's going to move. <clears throat> and the elder, 
To me, the elder is whoever's got the biggest cup of Jesus in the place. Okay? To be an elder, you just got to be a four-year-old in a room full of three-year-olds. <laughs> okay? This guy ain't an elder to this guy. I don't care how many seminaries you've been to. Okay? And I'm not picking on nobody. I'm just saying it doesn't matter what you know. It matters how much God is in you. Because we're supposed to be the body of Christ. We got some baby Christians who haven't been walking with the Lord very long. But they hear his voice. And they walk in his ways and they hate sin. Because they understood that it's a spiritual thing that has to happen to us. You know? Christianity is different than Islam and Buddhism and everything else. Because it's not a theory. It's not a theology. It's not a philosophy. It's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It is God living in us. Well, he probably ought to find a way to get out. You know? He's wanting to come out of you to the people at your work. He's wanting to speak through you. He's wanting to move in your life and prove who he is through you. Yes. We are the hands and feet. We don't get to be the head. So I hold somebody's hand sometimes and I pray and I feel the Holy Spirit just draining my cup down my arm and filling their cup. And Sometimes they'd start speaking in tongues where they didn't used to. Sometimes they'd fall over. Although I wasn't aiming for that. I, I, don't think it, I don't think it proves anything. If the same people fall over every Wednesday night when the pastor lays hands on them, they rise up just the same as they were before. You know, Mariah Woodworth ever laid hands on somebody, they'd be out for three days. And when they got up, they'd been to hell, and they were different. They heard angels talking to them. They heard they, they, something happened. You know, I want to see some fruit. Yes. It, it, it ain't no good jumping around if there's no fruit. Okay? So so I'd hold somebody's hand and stuff would happen. And they were scared and, and, and they wouldn't leave the house because they had agoraphobia and they, they couldn't even whatever. And we'd pray and we'd rebuke that spirit of fear and fill their cup and they're back at work and they're fine. You know? God would do stuff. If your body ain't right, it's because there ain't enough Jesus in it. You get enough Jesus in your body, nothing can hurt you. You know, John G. Lake, you ever hear John G. Lake? Turn of the century, revivalist healing guy went to Africa. 100,000 people got healed. During a plague, him and his guys were doing the burial details. Nobody, would, nobody wanted that job. People were dropping like flies. A British hospital ship parked off the coast said, would you come and tell us what you're doing so that none of your workers are getting infected by this? He's like, okay, but you're not going to like it. So he goes out there and he said, they say, how? How is it that you're not getting infected? He says, I'm right with the Lord. What do you mean? He said, go down to the morgue, open one of the, body, the cadavers that you have, scrape out the foam in their lungs of this infectious thing, come up here, smear it on my hand under a microscope and watch. And they did it. They watched all those, all those cells, all that bacteria die wow. as soon as it touched his hand. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? He should be flowing out of you everywhere. There's all kinds of kids chasing Wicca, chasing whatever, chasing vampires, chasing whatever thing because they want some power. They believe there's something out there and they don't know how to reach it and the church isn't showing them. Why? Because the church isn't sharing with each as they have a need. When we start flowing, when the Holy Spirit starts flowing into people and changing their lives and we, sh we show people how to do this, it changes everything. Okay, now... <clears throat> I've got some videos out there about some folks that are like, they understand this, and they'll have a conference where people will come down front and they'll lay hands on them, and if you go down the aisle and you say, give me whatever that guy's got, you'd be barking like a dog, clucking like a chicken in no time, okay? There's no telling what that guy's got, but if you go down the aisle and you say, I want nothing except Jesus. I want nothing but Jesus. You put your armor on and you say, give me the blue stuff. I'll take as much as I can get. I don't want any red stuff. I don't want his yellow stuff. You know? You'd be okay. You'd be okay. But you don't got to go across the country for that. You can go to a high school football game and beg for Jesus and he'll show up. You know? I know that people hold my hand and I say, brother, whatever I got, you can have. And something happens. Something happens. 
and God starts moving in them and things start changing. And sometimes they start crying and they start hearing God better and whatever. But they could just reach up and hold his hand. It, he's just as he's more real than me. I don't understand how, but he says he is. Somehow he's more real than me. And if you could hold my hand, well, you could just reach up and hold his hand. One lady came to the furniture store selling some some artwork, you know, like motivational, like fly with eagles instead of turkeys or whatever stuff. And I, I don't care what she's selling. We're going to talk about Jesus. So, <laughs> so I show her the cup thing, and, and I'm like, so you got any red stuff in there? Because you know, she's like, yeah. I'm like, well, do you want to, you know, do you know what it is, or do you want me to ask God, and God will tell me what it is? Oh, yeah, no, no, you don't need to ask. I don't want to ask. Because <laughs> he'll tell you, you know, you know, I've been in meetings. Everything's beautiful. The Holy Spirit's moving. Somebody comes in the door, and three people go, oh, no, you don't. You go home and apologize to your wife. Don't bring that in here. Okay, that's the way it ought to be. That's the way the church ought to be. Anyway, so so I'm talking to her, and we pray, and she, I'm, I'm like, well, do you want to pray and ask the Lord, you know, repent for the red stuff and get it out? And she's like, yeah. So we get to pray, and in not 10 seconds, she says, i got to go right now, quit my job, and start the daycare in my home that the Lord told me to do two years ago. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. She had a name and everything. The Lord had told her all of it, and she ignored it. Didn't want to risk it. Didn't want to step out in faith and believe that he'd take care of her. <clears throat> and I'm like, great. Well, we got this red stuff out of your cup. How about if I just put my shoulder, on, my hand on your shoulder and pray for you and just ask the Lord to give you whatever I got and give your cup full? She looks at me. She says, well, couldn't I just stick a straw in the big blue river flowing over my head? Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> whatever works, do that. But believe in faith and receive. He is not far away. One guy, I'm talking to him on the phone, and we repented for a bunch of stuff. He's out in his car parked somewhere in Kansas, and we just repented for a bunch of stuff. And I said, well, you know, you just need to get your cup full. Okay, now I just reach up and hold his hand and suck real hard, touch the hem of his garment, but, you know, don't do it the way I do. Just ask the Lord how to get your cup full and do whatever he tells you. So he's praying, and I'm watching in the spirit, I'm watching his cup get full. And right when it's humped up over the top, overflowing, he says, wow, that was cool. I said, what did the Lord tell you? He said, well, I just asked the Lord how to get my cup full, and I saw Jesus standing in front of me with a big goblet, and he said, take, drink, this is my blood which is shed for you, and I drank till my cup was full. I'm like, that's way prettier than hold my hand and suck. But <laughs> that's beautiful. You know? Whatever works. But you gotta understand, you gotta believe that if you're a little kid and you tug on mommy's skirt enough times and say, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, she's gonna give you something to eat. And he is a good dad. And if you pray, Lord, I don't want a scorpion. I want bread and not a stone. I want an egg and not a scorpion. He'll give you the good stuff. Okay? So it doesn't matter if it's me. I, I don't I tell people I don't care if it's me, your wife, your whatever. Don't receive nothing from nobody that ain't Jesus. Because the days are evil, and even the elect will be deceived. And receive stuff they're not supposed to receive. Paul says to Timothy, lay hands lightly on no man lest you partake in their sins. Okay? Well, I don't I don't think that's about ordination and whatever, that you need to have three different committees for them to go through before you ordain them and whatever. I, I, I think he's talking about this, at least on some level. He's talking about the danger. You know, if, if I've had people that were involved in witchcraft their whole life, three, four generations of witches, and they understand about transference. They understand that amulets and all kinds of things can hold, the, can hold demons, and that they're bad, and that there's places where there's been so much death that it's a bad place. Okay? Now, I don't believe in ghosts. I understand about demons. But, but if, the, if handkerchiefs and aprons that touch Paul's body can heal people, well, then the, the enemy's got a counterfeit of everything God has. Right. So, <clears throat> so here's the deal. If there's red stuff in your cup, you need to say you're sorry. Whatever it is, whatever pride, whatever self, wherever it came from, however it got there, just ask the Lord to scrub it out. And then ask him to take a flamethrower to your, to your yellow stuff and burn off any of you that thinks it's a good idea to keep inviting it in. And then hold his hand and drink from the river until you're full. Now, sometimes people have a hard time understanding this because he's, 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 it's in the spirit and it's far away and he's not right here and it doesn't seem real and, and he's not right alongside of you. That's what the body is here for. That's why we are here, to show them the reality of how that works and show them how to connect to him. 
that if it works with me, if it works with Pastor, if it works with Liz, then it's going to work with, with Jesus far better. I don't really, even since I was a little kid preaching summer camps and stuff like that, I didn't have a whole like bow your heads and close your eyes and slink up to the front so nobody can see you. That ain't martyrdom. Okay? You can't do that. No, you, you better be loud and proud and mean it and be bold or, or else, you know. So if God's been talking to your heart and you know you're not full, and you know that there's something you need that you don't have, some gift you've been praying for that you can't seem to reach. Smith Wigglesworth, a, another great revivalist, said that all the gifts of the Spirit will show up in the man that's transparent, that doesn't make it about him. If God knows that, that you can be trusted, he'll give you all the stuff. And I can testify that's true. When I finally found somebody that interpreted tongues in a charismatic church, I said, Lord, give me that, because I can't hardly find any of them, you know. So I interpret my tongues, interpret most everybody's tongues all the time when the Lord says. Healing, miracles, I've seen all kinds of stuff happen. Authority, discernment of spirits, I pretty much see demons all the time on folks and tell you what's messing with them. Wisdom, this is wisdom I'm talking about. Wisdom is cut the baby in half. Real simple, real pure, right to the heart of the matter. Wisdom is get your cup full and everything will be fine. Say you're sorry, get the red stuff out, and then go find somebody to give it away to so that you're not lukewarm and stagnant. Yeah. <clears throat> if the Lord is speaking to you and you know your cup's not full, if the Lord just had you repent for something and you want to get your cup full, or if you want a bigger cup than the cup you got now, well, come up here and let's pray. Because we're the body and we're supposed to share with each as they have a need. And whatever good thing I got in me, to my last grain of rice, to my last dollar, to the last bit of treasure I have in heaven, I'll spend it on you. Because you're my brother, you're my sister, and I love you. And a bunch of them can testify that it's the love of God. It's not me. I'm a stinker. The yellow stuff in me just wants to sit around drinking beer and looking at porn and scratching himself. You know? There's no good thing in me. Except Jesus. And, and by his mercy, there's a lot of Jesus. And I'll be glad to give you all of it. If I never hear his voice again, if I never see anything again, if I'm eating out of a dumpster on a crack hiring prostitutes tomorrow, I'll still give it all to you. Because that's the way we're supposed to be, and that's the love of Christ. So I'm asking you, if you want more, I'm here. We got others that are here. We pray real good. And you come and seek the body.